It is, in fact, remarkably ideologically consistent. Come with me on a libertarianism ride. A really, really bright one, apparently. Oh, let's turn that down a notch. Whoop. Big pothole. They're probably never going to fix it either. So listen. Listen to me talk about libertarianism. More specifically, the fact that I'm a pretty darn staunch libertarian, but despite the fact that I am aggressively anti-censorship, I censor comments. I censor comments on my posts, on my videos. I selectively delete other people's comments on my videos. It makes me a hypocrite, right? You're a libertarian. You're an extremely anti-censorship libertarian because you think that it's wrong for people to be silenced. Well, it's true. I am an extremely anti-censorship libertarian. <clears throat> but there's a little nuance that's missing from that hypocrite accusation. So let's go over that really quickly. I am against censorship with the exception of individuals making individual choices to censor. For example, if a television network chooses not to carry content because other people demanded that they don't loudly, thus denying that content as an option to the people that could otherwise tune in and see it, that's bad censorship. That is not okay. However, if you are a parent, for example, or you run a household, and it, it doesn't apply quite as well today because everybody has a stinking TV, but if you're in a household and you tell everyone who lives under your roof that while you live under my roof in my household that I own, you're not going to watch X channel or X material or whatever. If you ban that content from being watched inside your home, that censorship I'm totally okay with. It's sort of like the difference between positive and negative rights, where in one case you have the right to do, in the other case you have the right to not have done upon you. <clears throat> so it is that I'm okay with censorship whenever it's you choosing to censor something small under which you have your authority, something that is yours in your direct control at the individual level. Corporations are not individuals. Corporations, I have a problem with censorship by corporations, by government, by any of these larger entities. Once the control of the entity is... Why am I in such a dark place now? Once the control of the entity has extended beyond the individual, when that control starts to cover a group of individuals rather than just one person, <clears throat> as you climb the sizings of those groups, the censorship becomes more and more immoral, unethical to me. My flavor of libertarianism is radical rights for individuals, but as you group individuals, as you concentrate power, the more powerful that concentration becomes, the more people that concentration covers, the less they should be allowed to enforce that sort of censorship. Because what happens is, if you have power over multiple people, and you are able to censor, think about it in terms of rights. If you have the right to speak, there is also an other side to that. To have a right to speak is not as simple as just being able to open your mouth and say words. Because if you were allowed to speak, but you could only speak in your house, we would not meaningfully call that a right to free speech. That's not free speech. So there comes with your rights the right to also 
perform that act in a place where you could be heard by those who choose to hear it. And that's the problem. We are, we have these rights that are on their face and then we have these implied rights that come with them that are required to meaningfully exercise those rights. You can't just get away from that. You can't dodge the implied rights. You cannot just go, well, we're not going to give you the implied right because if you do that, then you're taking away the explicit right too. So it is with censorship. Censorship is basically the anti-right to listen to things that you would choose to listen to. It is the anti-opposite of free speech. And it's a terrible way to put it, but that really is the best explanation of what it is. Because what is, what is free speech? It's when you can say whatever you want, whenever you want, without repercussions for having spoken. Now, a lot of I don't want to get into the territory where we're talking about, you know, with your rights come responsibilities because, you know, obviously you can use your free speech to uh, tell someone a lie that causes them to give you stuff that um, obviously you didn't actually earn and that's called fraud. But I don't want to get into those murky waters. Keep it simple for this example. When someone's speaking, if you deny them the right to freely speak, it's not free speech. You, you have censored their speech. So censorship in that regard is bad. But if someone comes over to your house and you tell them they can't say certain things or they'll have to leave, you are still denying them the right to speak freely but in a very limited capacity. They can go anywhere else. You are a tiny, tiny little area in the marketplace of ideas. You are a very, very small storefront, so to speak. So by you limiting them in your limited capacity, you're not really stopping them from speaking, and thus you're not stopping the other people there from hearing what they might say if they choose to do so. You're not meaningfully preventing anyone from exercising their explicit and their implicit rights in that regard, except under your roof. Now here's the problem. What's the difference between Facebook and my house? And that's where we come into where I am totally okay with censorship and then I'm not. It's not hypocrisy, it's based on how much of the marketplace you can cordon off and you can control underneath your thumb. Facebook is controlled by a small group of people, but Facebook is a humongous amount of the square footage in the marketplace of ideas. Because Facebook is used by a huge number of people. so. The corporate entity Facebook, the small cabal that runs it, has extreme control. They can limit what you can say. They can also limit other people's ability to listen. So in this regard, Facebook has the ability to basically prevent you from meaningfully exercising the right to free speech and from exercising the opposite side of that the right to hear what other people have to say if you want to listen. And because Facebook controls such a huge amount of the marketplace of ideas, on the internet because they are effectively uh, the internet's new public square, so to speak. It's not a perfect analogy, but you could say that Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, all these, these small number of major social firms, YouTube, that those big four, really, you could easily say that they comprise over 90% of the modern public square. The place that you go if you want to speak where other people can meaningfully listen to you. Because if you have to leave town and drive 60 miles down a dirt road and step into a, an abandoned trailer 
and other people would have to go to all that effort as well just to be able to hear what you have to say and decide if they want to listen further. You're, ha you're being sequestered, you're being effectively exiled, you're kicked out of the society, you're not allowed to participate. The people who would participate with you, well, now they have to expend a huge amount of effort as well. It's like this in really heavily controlled places like China. And I want you to think about what this ultimately really leads to. The truly sinister aspect of this is where you end up when you do this. Let us take a large, like some, something that's pretty universally hated by a large number of people, which I suppose is what universally hated means in the United States. White supremacists, Ku Klux Klansmen, there is an extremely broad disdain, dislike, distaste, desire to not listen to these people that fall under the umbrella of white supremacists. However, if you ban them from Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, if they aren't allowed to say what they want to say there, they have to drive 60 miles down a road and get an abandoned trailer and do it. And you might say, oh, that's fine and great. I am more than happy with them being able to exercise their rights as long as they're not allowed to exercise their rights anywhere that anyone else might actually be able to listen to them. Because it would be horrible if they adopted their ideas. First of all, if someone else adopts their ideas, their ideas may be better. You're afraid that they might be right about something and that other people will see it. Here's, here's the other side and the more important part of that. If you push them off like that, it does add the appeal of like the, the forbidden fruit, a tree growing forbidden fruit. Once someone tells you you can't do something, you become, you become very curious as to why and you want to find out for yourself rather than just listening to them blindly because it's very tempting. Because, like, why don't they want me to know? And why don't they want you to know? And you know what? If they can give you a good reason that sits well with you and kind of chills your curiosity out, maybe you won't do the thing. But you're going to eat the fruit of that forbidden tree if you're told enough, oh, you, you can't eat this fruit. You absolutely can't eat this fruit. Why not? You just can't. But that doesn't tell me why not. Because it's bad. Okay, well, how would I know that if I don't... Because I say it's bad. Because everyone else says it's bad. Because it, it, if you eat the fruit, it'll make you sick. Okay? How do you know that? And you see where this goes. It becomes more interesting, and if the answers aren't sufficient, people, some people, will be compelled to seek out this forbidden fruit. They'll be compelled to drive down that road and see what's at the end of it. And then they might listen. But now they're listening in an isolated place, away from everything else. So, because they've sort of found this forbidden fruit, what you've kind of implied it doesn't really seem to live up to the way that you said it. Now, your trust has been eroded. Their trust in you, rather, has been eroded. And this forbidden fruit idea, well, you, they were lied to about it. So what else have they been lied to? And it just makes that curiosity go up. That's the problem with sequestering ideas outside of the free marketplace of ideas. So, Winding all of this back, bringing it back into why, Jody Bruchon, do you, on the, your YouTube channel and in comments and such, you know, why do you censor other people speaking under your channel, but you have a problem with YouTube censoring comments? Because YouTube has power over the public square beyond anything I can even really imagine. I have power over my tiny little corner where I sit most of the time. It's my place to care for as I see fit. If I see bad ideas pop up in my comment section, if I see someone trolling and doing a bad job of it and there's no value to it, 
then I can call those ideas. They're free to speak them on their own channels in their own videos. They're free to speak them in other comment sections. They're free to speak them in comments other than mine. And yeah, I even will sometimes, if a thread gets ridiculous, I'll delete, if I started the thread, if I made the first comment, I'll delete the head comment to prune all the rest of the comments that are tacked on underneath it. Because it gets real ridiculous. I have that control, I'm going to use it at my discretion. Nothing stops any of these people from leaving another comment somewhere else, saying what they want to say somewhere else. I can censor my little corner, but I have a problem with someone coming in and saying that everyone in the entire facility, everyone in this huge chunk of the modern public square, the modern marketplace of ideas, is forbidden from saying certain things, is forbidden from doing certain things, that from associating with certain things. You know, you're not allowed to talk about the 2020 election results, for example. You know, why not? Why are you not allowed to discuss it? Why is it that you're sequestering this idea? Why is it that you're blanket banning literally billions of people? Well, at least as far as people who make videos, perhaps hundreds of millions, from talking about a subject. What's the difference between YouTube saying you can't talk about the 2020 election results and me deleting comments talking about the 2020 election results? In one case, the censorship on YouTube's part has a drastic effect on everyone. It squelches that idea from even being discussed at all. Whereas in my case, it squelches that idea from being discussed directly underneath my videos in my threads that I curate in much the same regard that the government maintains the nation or the state or the city so I maintain my house. And that's the difference between my censorship and big censorship. And it's progressive, for example. I have a tiny corner. YouTube has a humongous field. But let's say, for example, you're a huge creator. Let's say you're a huge creator and you ban certain words or phrases from being discussed. First of all, people will work around it with um, things that allude to them, for example. Like how Leafy banned ever anyone from saying the phrase weak chin after the iDubs thing came out, mocking him for having a weak chin. That kind of thing, it, it's still only on their one channel, you know? And they have a bigger channel, they have a bigger reach, but at the end of the day, anybody else could make another video and get their stuff out there. But it is a bigger problem when someone big like that restricts large swaths of discussion versus when someone like me with a thousand subscribers does the same thing. Because I don't have meaningful power to silence many people on many subjects very far. I'm cleaning my house. Some people have bigger houses. Some people even own subdivisions and are responsible for maintaining them, you know, like homeowners associations. As you go up in the amount of things that it affects, they need to be more reined in. Governments, and make no mistake, moderating a YouTube channel or a forum is a government. It's not the kind of government that we normally think of, but you are governing something. Governments, as they cover more people, have more power and can affect more lives and, most importantly, restrict more rights with their actions, must be limited more, must be restricted more, so that they cannot meaningfully exercise that power in a way that restricts a large number of people's rights. The power needs to be in the hands of individuals. I am a staunch individualist, not a collectivist. And that's why the seeming hypocrisy of me censoring comments on my YouTube channel while calling out YouTube for censoring comments all across their whole platform is not hypocrisy at all. It is, in fact, remarkably ideologically consistent. The problem is that people who are looking at me and calling me a hypocrite for these two seemingly opposing positions 
they're not actually understanding where I stand when they do so. And in fact, it serves their interests not to recognize any of the details, any of the nuance that's there. It serves their interest instead if when they analyze this, they simply look at my overall position on censorship in my videos and then my censorship and go, oh, two, oh that, those things are the same. But had they taken just a little bit of time to think further, of course they would have come to the correct conclusion, which is not that I am committing two different, I'm taking two different positions that oppose each other. There is no dissonance, there is no hypocrisy. The individualism is the key that you're missing. And some of you have been missing it intentionally. Others of you have not been missing it intentionally, you just didn't really bother looking into it. But there it is, regardless of which one you are. I am an individualist libertarian. If you control more people, you must have those controls weakened progressively as you gain more overall control. Your little actions can have big effects, huge effects. They can have ripple effects that extend beyond your own boundaries. And that's why I take the positions that I do. Thanks for listening. I hope that this has been interesting. If it has, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to be light-handed with them. But, you know, if you say something really stupid and it's not funny to me, I'll probably delete it. But you're welcome to try. All respectful comments will be left alone. Have a good one. Take care.